Scottish folk and fairy tales. Have a chat. In the old days, when spinning was constant employment of women, the spinning wheel had its presiding genius or fairy. Her border name was Habitrot, and Mr. Wilkie tells the following legend about her. A Selkirkshire matron had one fair daughter who loved to play better than work, wandering in the meadows and lanes, better than the spinning wheel and the distaff. The mother was heartily vexed at this taste, for in those days, no lassie had any chance of a good husband unless she was an industrious spinster. So she cajoled, threatened, even beat her daughter, but all to no avail. The girl remained what her mother called an idle cuddy. At one day, at, at last, one spring morning, the good wife gave her seven hints of lint, saying she would take no excuse. They must be returned in three days and, of, and spun into yarn. The girl saw her mother was in earnest, so she plied her distaff as well as she could, but her little hands were all untaught, and by the evening of the second day, a very small part of her task was accomplished. She cried herself to sleep that night, and in the morning, throwing aside her work in despair, she strolled out onto the fields, all sparkling with dew. At last she reached a flowery knoll, at whose foot ran a little burn, shaded with the wood brine and wood woodbine and red wild roses and there she sat down burying her face in her hands and she looked up she was surprised to see by the margin of the stream an old woman quite unknown to her drawing out the thread as she basked in the sun there was nothing very remarkable in her experience in her appearance except the length and thickness of her lips only only she was seated on a self-bored stone the girl rose and went to the good dame and gave her a friendly greeting and couldn't help but inquired why the lady who was so long lippet spreading spinning thread mahini said the old woman as she pleased with her friendliness and by no means resenting the personal remark it must be noticed that spinners often constantly wet their fingers with their lips and as they draw the thread through the rock or the distaff ah said the girl i should be spinning too but it's all to no purpose i never do my task on which the old woman proposed to do it for her. Overjoyed, the maiden ran to fetch her lint and placed it in her new friend's hand, asking her name and where she should call for the yarn in the evening. But she received no reply. The old woman's form passed away from her among the trees and the bushes and disappeared. The girl, much bewildered, wandered about a little, sat down to rest, and finally fell asleep by the little knoll. When she awoke, she was surprised to find it was evening. The glories of the western sky were passing into twilight gray. Cosleen, the evening star, was beaming with silvery light and soon to be lost in the moon's increasing splendor. While watching these changes, the maiden was startled by the sound of an uncouth voice which seemed to be issued from below a self-bored stone close behind her. She laid her ear to the stone and distinctly heard these words. Little Ken's the wee lassie on yon bray head that my name's Habitrot. Then, looking down the hole, she saw her friend, the old dame, walking backwards and forwards in the deep cavern among the group of spinsters, all seated around the colliddy stones, a kind of white pebble found in river, and busy with distaff and spindle. An unsightly company they were, with lips more or less disfigured from their employment, as were old habitrots. The same peculiarity extended to another of the sisterhood who sat in the distant corner reeling yarn, and as she marked in addition by grey eyes which seemed starting from her head, a long hooked nose. As she reeled thus, she counted one cribby, two cribby, three cribby, one one ain, one cribby, two cribby, eighth cribby, or, excuse me, three cribbies, now that's two, and so on. And in this manner, she continued to till she counted a cut hank slip, a cribby being once round the reel, and a measure of about three feet, a reel being 18 lunches long. While the girl was still watching, she heard Habitra address the singular being by the name of Scantly Mab, and tell her to bundle up the yarn, and it was time for the young lassie should give it to her mother. Delighted to hear this, our listener got up and turned homewards, nor was she long kept in suspense. Habitrot soon overtook her and placed the yarn in her hands. Oh, what can I do for you in return? Ex she exclaimed in delight. Nothing, nothing, replied the dame. But don't tell your mother what, who spun the yarn. Scarcely crediting her good fortune, our heroine went home, and she found her mother had been busy making saucers or black puddings and hanging them up on the lum to dry. 
and then tired out she'd retired to rest finding herself very hungry after a long day on the knoll the girl took down pudding after pudding and fried up and ate them and then went to bed too her mother was up the next morning and when she came into the kitchen and found all the saucers gone and the seven hanks of yarn lying beautifully smooth and bright upon her table her mingled feelings of vexation and delight were too much and she ran about the house wildly crying out my daughter spun seven 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 my daughter's eaten seven 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 all before daylight a laird who happened to chance by riding heard the exclamation but could not understand it so he rode up to ask the good wife what was the matter and what she broke out my daughter spun seven 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 my daughter's eaten seven 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 before daylight and if you didn't believe me why come in why don't you come in and see it and the laird's curiosity was aroused and he alighted and went into the cottage and there he saw the yarn and admired it so much he begged to see the spinner the mother dragged in the blushing girl her rustic grace soon won his heart and he avowed he, he was lonely without a wife and so long been in search of one that was a good spinner so their troth was plighted and the wedding took place soon afterwards the bridal the bride stifling in her apprehensions that she would not prove so deft at the spinning wheel as her lover expected and once more old habitrot came to her aid whether the good dame herself so notable was as indulgent to all idle damsels does not appear certainly she did not fail this little pet of hers bring your bri bonny bri bridegroom to my cell sa said she to the young bride soon after their marriage he shall see what becomes of spin spinning and he will never t tell tie you to the spinning wheel accordingly the bride led her husband the next day to the flowery knoll and bade him to look through the self-bored stone too great was his surprise to behold habitrot dancing and jumping over her spinning wheel singing all the time this ditty to her sisterhood while she kept time with the spindles we who live in the dreary den are both rank and foul to see hidden from the glorious sun that teems the fair earth's canopy Ever must our evenings lone, spent by the colluding stone, cheerless in the evening gray, while Cosleen has died away, but ever bright and ever fair are those who breathe in this evening air, and lead upon the self board stone, unseen by all, but leave me alone. The song ended with scantly Mab asked Habitrot what she meant by this last line, unseen by all but me alone. There is one, replied Habitrot, who I bid to come here at this hour, and he has heard my song through the self board stone. So, so saying, she rose and opened another door, which was concealed by the roots of an old tree, and invited the bridal pair to come in and see her family. The laird was astonished at the weird looking company, as he well might be, and inquired one after another the cause of the strange dis distortion of their lips. In different tone of voice, and with different twist of their mouth, each answered the it was occasioned by spinning. At last they tried to say so, but one granted out Nakasind, and the other was Ukasand, and the third was Oakasand, and all, however, conveyed the fact to the bridegroom's understanding, while Habitrot slightly slightly hinted that his wife that if his wife were allowed to spin, her pretty lips would grow out of shape too, and her pretty face would get ugsome yellow an ugsome look. So before he left the cave he protested to his little wife should never touch a spinning wheel and he kept his word she used to wander in the meadows by his side or ride behind him over the hills and all the flax grown in this land was sent to old habitrot and converted into yarn